Hey guys, this is Fighter Cows with the game Riffers, and with me, of course, is 16 Bit Jeff, Double RPG, and we're here on Rift Table Arcade, episode 29, to keep our Road to E3 ongoing. This time we're talking about Sony, and since I'm the resident Sony fan, not to be confused with ponies, <laughs> I'm one hosting this uh, episode. We're on the road again. <laughs> We can't wait to get on the road again. So we have what we think is going to happen and all that. Where do we even start with Sony? Oh, boy. Um, Let's start with... Um, let's start with the easy one. I'll start easy. I'll start slow. Okay. I want to hear what you guys think about this. Okay. Uncharted 4. That's yep. easy. We're going to see something on it, even though we got pushed. Probably back. the first gameplay footage of Uncharted 4. That's my first, fear. First, uh... And hopefully, I forgot. Is, is it 30 frames or 60 frames? Uh, I think they're, they're, I th it's at 30 at the moment. There, I think the last update I heard that they're trying. For that's 60 what I'm saying. Frames. Yeah, so they might mm -hmm. get it up to 60 frames in this demo and not and have more. It's it's more polished. Mm -hmm. Which is which is crazy because I don't get why that they're having trouble trying to get it at 60 frames when both PlayStation 4 and Xbox One can do both 60 frames. Of course. My guess is they're trying to put so much like we, we got to put the graphics so high. We got we got to make sure you even though nobody pays attention to a tiny leaf falling, we got to make sure that leaf looks immaculate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but here's the thing, Sony. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a small tiny downgrade to have 60 frames to exactly. be honest. See, you know I mean, especially oh, yeah. for a shooter. Like, mm -hmm. Especially exactly. Which I'd we know that's what the Uncharted games are. They're a mix of Tomb Raider and a third-person shooter. You know, it's, it was like the complete opposite of how I felt with uh, Watch Dogs when it was downgraded for the consoles. When they even didn't, you know, bump it up to 60 frames, when it was just still downgraded still and still 30, at 30 I frames. Yeah. Long. Yeah. Downgraded and, see, like, if, if Sony... So here's, here's what you do, Sony. It's okay not to have everything looking pitch perfect as long as we get that 60 frames. Oh, and yeah. I'm pretty sure it's still going to look freaking awesome, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's but still going to look pretty good. I mean... But hey, if you... How long has it been development for already? Oh. Two years? Oh. I th yeah, I think two years. Uh, coming up this uh, holiday season. So it's going to look better than the first-gen games already. I mean, I'm pretty sure, so... I mean, it's... I mean, it's okay to make games look pretty, but make that secondary. Make sure that they run very smoothly. That's, that's, yeah. all, that's all we care about. That's like the big thing that a lot of gamers tend to forget in this day and age, that probably the biggest priority when developing a game is to make it run smoothly and not about it being all pretty or looking uh, up to 1080p standards. Mm -hmm. Because that is nice. Because, because I mean, you know, we talked about this, anything. and we talked about this before too, because 1080p gaming, that costs way more money than 720p gaming. Yep. I mean, honestly, I would gladly take a 900p res title just for 60 frames. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, but before before I thought I didn't care until I actually felt the difference. I'm like, nope, <laughs> nope. I need 60, especially in shooters, especially in shooters. And just and fighters. And just to go off topic real quick, Jeff, you know there it's actually one game for the Xbox One that's gonna come out in 1080p, right? And you know which what, which game that is. No, actually, you uh, refresh my memory. World of Tanks Xbox One Edition. Oh, really? Yep. Yep, just thought I'd just throw that little tidbit right so there. But getting got, back to Sony. We've got more. We got Uncharted, so I'm pretty sure that's an easy one. Like I said, yeah. I'll, I'll oh, start yeah. safe. So, yeah, we we can definitely agree that there is going yeah. to be a gameplay demo at the definitely. at the press conference. Oh, yeah. And it's going to look better. I Hopefully 60 frames as well. Mm -hmm. just, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Better answer. Because last time I was like, oh, I could tell. Even though it looked good already, mm -hmm. I could you could tell that it wasn't done. Because I'm, I'm like, hmm, I got to... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, stuff, yeah, stuff. I'm not. On. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little weary. Not because of the final product. I'm gonna play it when eventually I get a PlayStation Four once more down the road. Here's the thing. I'm weary because of all the behind-the-scenes drama that happened with Naughty Dog during the development. Oh, yes. Oh yes, the restructuring with Amy Hammy's firing and, and you know with the development team. You know the duo of The Last of Us coming in to do the story and direction it's just like i want the game to be good don't get me wrong but neil Druckmann. yeah but i want the game to be good don't get me wrong but it's like when i 
hear, always hear something like that, like behind the scenes drama, and, and like that. It always makes me worry about the final product. You know what I mean? Oh, of course. Just you know, throwing it out effects. there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm optimistic, but you're right. Now I'm back. Now on to another game that I just want to say: Will we? Will we? Or won't we see any mention of? And this is, I'm laughing. I can't even finish this sentence. You know what I'm going to talk about? Because we talked before recording what game I'm talking about. Yeah. That I can't even finish. Oh. I'm so... Can I, can I just say, can I just say, I'm, I'll probably spoil it, but you are our equivalent to Game Trailer's own Kyle Bossman. I'm just going to say it. Is that a good or bad thing? Well, what are you going to bring up? That's Sony's what own... What do you think, he? Sony's own game that it has been nominated as Vaporware. I have more faith in a certain other game that's Vaporware. Or and that's, that's more realistic than yet, yet more realistic Vaporware. Than, I can't say the game name. Of the game. I, ser I seriously have that little faith that it, we're going to see it, that I can't even finish it. It's just like You're a boy who is riding on the back of a furry winged dragon, and... It's supposed to show this concept where the two will bond together to have this really great understanding with each other that could potentially lead to tragedy. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. That's right. The Last Guardian. So let's start a game. I, I said before recording that I have more faith that we'll see Shenmue than, than this game. Yeah, than The Last Guardian. Yeah, because... Well, actually, let's, let's start Let's start a little, little quick game. Jeff and Double R. Okay. This, okay, this is not exclusive. Game three games that are vaporware that you have more faith in seeing than Last Guardian. I'll start with okay, you, Jeff. I got a good one. It's not exclusive, but it's a game that that has been considered vaporware because of the developer. Even though we saw last year, not really, but it was behind closed doors, Doom 4. Because that's been developing for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two more. Yeah, um, I, I I expect a new Metroid from Nintendo more than The Last Guardian. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and from Microsoft, hmm. You know, not from Microsoft, but I see a new Blood Rain more realistic. <laughs> oh, man. And that that <laughs> probably is true, though. More <laughs> the Last Guardian! <laughs> true. How about you, Double R? When it comes to Sony, a or, game or that like Jeff did like any any developer just did oh any developer more. okay uh let's see uh <laughs> from Nintendo I would say we will definitely see a new Kid Icarus game before the Last Guardian yeah oh yeah because we did get Kid Icarus Uprising in 2012 which was three years ago so. Might as well make sense. And that was a big hit, too. It was so, a yeah, big that hit. Makes more sense. Yeah, so I can't imagine that Nintendo would not want to make a new Kid Icarus game before The Last Guardian comes out. Now, in terms of... Uh, in terms of Microsoft? Uh, I would say get the developer behind the Jet Set Radio games and make the spiritual successor that they wanted to make. Mm -hmm. So I definitely see that as a possibility of them, uh, of that game coming to fruition before uh, The Last Guardian. And, yep. and for uh, and for any developer, uh, I would say Square Enix with Kingdom Hearts 4 after Kingdom Hearts 3. Of course. Of course. Don't you know every, anything about profit? <laughs> I'd say I'd say we're more likely to see from. I'd say we're more likely to see Half Life Three. <laughs> oh, I actually just thought about two oh, right wait, now. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, continue. But um, Half Life. Yeah. I, I think it's more likely to see Half Life Three. We're more oh, likely no, to no. see freaking uh, compared to Last Guardian. I bet you that's more likely now. E e even really? Though, yes! I think they're both equally! I, I, think, I think Valve actually at least has concept art. No, no. <laughs> I believe Portal 3 more than that, to be honest. I believe Sonic Boom 2. 
<laughs> oh god! <laughs> well, my serious, I really do believe Half-Life 3 more than freaking Let's Go. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there, I don't care. Oh, let the nightmare come people come in. I thought we were fun! <laughs> come at me in the comments. Half-Life 3 more, more likely. And then, uh, I, I think we're, f with all this news, I am sorry to bring it up for not think. I, I, I don't want any. I don't want to mention it beyond what I'm just gonna say. Oh, we have to. They went to mo. I don't want because it's <laughs> not Sony. They. But you want me to say it? I no. no I just I just want to say that with what they said about going to mobile, mm -hmm. it's more likely we'd fracking see freaking before Last Guardian, freaking mobile version of Bloody Roar, <laughs> <laughs> which would just tear my heart out. Say what you did, Konami, with your stupidity. You made Kalos into Sammy Classic Sonic fan. Uh. <laughs> they, yes, they did. They you started. freaking fricks! <laughs> and then my third and final game that I'd rather, that probably more likely. I already said it. Shenmue. And not for positive. Shenmue You're for saying that realistically in a negative in a negative light. I yeah. Uh, yeah. Shenmue. But um, as well, like. Like, I, yeah, I have more faith in that. Because at least they showed we're talking to Yu Suzuki over here at Sony. I'm like, well, let the man just the funny, get his daggone game. I know, and you have. <laughs> it, see, that's one thing that both Microsoft, Nintendo, and even Sony have of all three. And Sony is the lowest at this point because of what happened last generation. But still, with how much PlayStation 4 is sold, I think they can give a couple cool million to uh you to finally make Shenmue 3 along with Sega. Exactly. Yeah. But with uh but I just I was I just thought about this too when you guys finished off with yours. There is one exclusive from Sony that I believe even though it was just confirmed as a fake I could still believe that it could be revived for today's, you know, gamers and for the, the current success that's the PS4. Unlike the Last Guardian, that's a revival of medieval. Mm, yes. Yeah. Sir Daniel Fortescue for well, a new adventure. You just you just made me want to go on to the next part of the, of the predictions. Is I was actually I was thinking about this before we even talked, before you even mentioned medieval. But I was asking which games do you think is more likely that we'll see out of these classic franchises Sony has? You mentioned medieval. How yep. how likely is a Crash or a Jack and Daxter? And it, I, I don't see it likely, but it needs to happen. That's one yes. thing that... I, I, I hate to say this, I like the PlayStation brand. What is you that? You know, Jerry. I'm sorry? Huh? No, I was just going to say, we've been friends for years. Like, yeah, years. For more than a mm -hmm. decade. I've been, fr I've been a fan of the PlayStation brand since 1997. Mm-hmm. That is one thing that has pissed me off with the PlayStation 4 so far. Is Sony not using their legacy IPs from the PlayStation 1 era to oh, God. give an actual chance once more? Mm hmm. Like, I, I, I think it's really. Part of my French, I really think it's asinine of Sony that they're not giving those that money that they've got for the PlayStation 4 that we know so far to say, like, oh, I don't know, trying to require the rights of Crash from Activision? Mm hmm. Again, from we know so far, because I, I can tell you, if you get a new Crash game and give it to Naughty Dog, because I would like to see Naughty Dog make, I, I, I would like to see Naughty Dog go back to their roots in some ways, like have two separate teams, one to make the realistic games and one to make the all age range titles like they did in the past. You know what I mean? The 3D platformers, basically. Exactly. Yes. And honestly, I, I'm sorry, what? Go ahead. And I honestly think that will happen because... Look what happened to ukulele. Oh Doesn't yeah. That prove right there we want. And Again, I, these and, people say these companies say we 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 don't. There's no proof that nobody wants blank franchise to return. Whoa. Kickstarter, and, and look, Kickstarter yeah, spiritual look at, successor. Yeah, of look at said franchise shows up mm -hmm. and makes money. Exactly. Mega Man, Banjo Kazooie slash 3D platformers, Castlevania. Yep. But, well, you know what the sad thing is. The three big head publishers and developers, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo, they do believe that. You know what I mean? That's the sad thing. Yep. Until they see these Kickstarters succeed. I don't blame them, unlike I do with Konami, for obvious reasons. Oh, yeah. 
But, you know, I do believe that after the success of Ukulele, I do believe that Sony is going to try with the vast amount of funds they've gotten back from selling how many worldwide units of this oh, God. Of the system now? They, I think they have enough to get the rights back to ban to a uh, uh, crash. Yeah, and uh, we know, Ash, I'm and we do know that the PlayStation still Four, company, but still. And, and and we do know that S Sony is selling the PlayStation Four at a profit right now. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. like, they're not selling it at a loss like it was last generation with the PlayStation Three. This is the complete and utter opposite. Mm hmm They make like seventeen dollars back on the low franchise? end. Uh, about another franchise that can make a revival. Uh, how about uh, have, how about have Sony get uh, Sony Ben get back to work on making a new siphon filter or a reboot? So I was gonna say that. Thank you. I was I, I was gonna bring up Twisted Metal. Th that's a good one too. But yeah, I think they. Filter. I think I would love both, but I think Twisted Metal's the least likely well, due Jack to the fact that how so that drawn to death. Yeah, he's working on it, and that's a free-to-play game, but still, it could be a possibility, but I don't see it happening because of how poorly the game sold, and how much botched of a game the code was even at launch. Like, I'm still that... seeing people talking about how they want a new Twisted Metal, and I'm like... I mean, don't get me wrong, I would love it, but I just can't see it happening no, at I... the moment. Yeah. Speaking of driving, here's a game I would love to see at the press conference. Probably, uh, I don't know how likely. I'm gonna say 50 50. Because mm -hmm. Drive Club wasn't so hot. Yeah. And, but be, but because 50 50, because maybe they're too embarrassed for Drive Club, even though it actually wasn't such a bad game, but the server issues. Yeah. And 50 50, yes! Because after, after seeing how that game was, they're like, no, 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 we still got a good driving game coming out. That's, of course, Gran Turismo. So you think that they're going to announce Gran Turismo 7? I, th I, th I think I think it's 50-50. You know what? I agree with you, but you know what I would say I would give more of a plausibility? What? Wipeout. Mmm, Wipeout. I think th I, they obviously are making a new uh, Gran Turismo because of what you just said. That is true because of how much of a big, huge embarrassment like Drive Club was. If you want proof... Drive Club was as big of an embarrassment as Halo the Master Chief Collection was for the Xbox One. Mm -hmm. They were both equally embarrassments for their respective consoles. I feel like Wipeout is more realistic because of the fact that I think at this point with how embarrassed Drive Club was for Sony as a publisher and developer arm, mm -hmm. I feel like that they would want to take a different risk in regards to the driving genre, you know what I mean? Oh... And we haven't seen a new installment from Wipeout from the release of Wipeout 20... The, 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 the last what, one, what, the whatever Vita. the Vita version was, yeah. Yeah. And and for consoles, it was Wipeout HD Fury, if I'm not mistaken. Which was back in 2008, right? I think so, yeah. Jeez. For a Grand Turismo and, 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 I, and I got that as one of those... Uh, uh, one of those uh, two free games or two, three, or six free games uh, during the PSN outage back in 2011 was Wipeout HD Fury. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're gonna do anything with Little Big Planet, cause three three wasn't bad, but it didn't it didn't sell well or it didn't. I don't remember. It was it sold all right, but it sold it sold better in the PS3 because they thought, hey, let's make it multiplat. Yeah. Because why not? I wonder because we if totally there's... shouldn't be a PlayStation 4 exclusive only, right? Uh, well, a lot of people... My dad is one of those people like like you and me that's like, oh, these cross plat. We, it's been two years. Let's make these games friggin' old for this gen, you know? No, that but for entirety, we've been having those last gen consoles for ten years. Exactly. You it's know, time but... for them to let them die. Let it let go. If they were gonna do another little, let bit... it go. <laughs> <laughs> if, if they were going to do another Little Big Planet type of game, or a Little Big Planet game, or something with user generated content, make either a sequel to Little Big Planet Karting or Mod Nation Racers. Oh, I would like to see that. I would like Mod to Nation see Revival of Mod Nation, to be honest. Still don't get why they made Little Big Planet Karting right or, after Mod Nation. Or for Revival, and I can't see this being realistically because of all the backlash because of Nintendo fanboys mm -hmm. comparing it. But I would like another go at PlayStation All-Stars. Am I the only one? No, I want to see it too, actually. 
Well, you know did, didn't Sony say that they have uh, further plans for PlayStation All-Stars? Yeah, they did, but I'm just hoping that that was an actual, you know, fluff and are actually serious, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there's no way that they would not want to do another one. I'm uh -huh. I'm but some actual PlayStation characters like like Sir Dan and uh, Ratchet and... Yeah. Bring Dart from Le Legend of Dragoon in as a playable character. Like, like they were supposed to the first time. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And it doesn't even hurt to bring in uh, ca other characters from other suppo other series within the PlayStation brand too as extras. Instead of just, oh, yeah. instead oh, yeah. of just one to represent, you know, represent the name of the game or whatever, bring in multiple characters, like what Nintendo done with Smash. Uh -huh. So now that we got the things, uh, I think I think that's all we can think of for. I mean, there's other. I think those are. There like are. The, but um, I wanted to talk about. Great. Now my head just went boop, and we're recording. It's all right. Um, there's one thing it, I can bring about, up that. Go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. It gives me time I, to think. I, th I think there's one thing that is, you know, honestly going to be announced is that I think there's going to be a never big update for this, uh, for the firmware that's used on the PlayStation uh, OS for PS4. Oh. I think they're I think they're announced at E3. And if there's one thing I want to see announced, there's two things. Even though I don't own the console, it's still BS that it's in second year as an available system that there's still no DLNA support as of now. That needs to be announced. And also, bringing PlayStation Classics to the PlayStation Store. On PS4. Mm -hmm. To be bought. Not yes. Just rented. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Those are two things that I really... I know they're not big, but they are big well, for someone who yeah. no longer has a PlayStation 3 that brought it in for a PlayStation 4. Speaking mm -hmm. of, that, that's what I was getting on. The other two consoles, the 3 and the Vita, do you think they have anything for the 3, or, or, or are they finally just going to say... Not, 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 no, whether, not whether it's smart I or not. I have more faith for PlayStation 3 than Vita. No, it's not, I'm just saying not whether it's smart or not, but whether they're finally done with 3, or if they still got stuff... They uh, still have stuff for three. Yeah, I know Vita, that. On the other hand, ugh. oh Vita, poor Vita. I, yeah. I still love it. And I, I you know, know they say they have stuff for Vita, but in real reality they don't. I'm sorry, continue. There's on. a game coming out for Vita that's gonna be good. But... I know. I I just heard that Sui Coden Three for the PS2 is getting a PS2 Classics re-release in Europe and in Japan. So it can't be that too far fetched for the rest of the games that are were on the PS2 to make it on the PS2 classics for the PS3 worldwide. So I assume that there's possibly some more uh, games that are coming out uh, in terms of the classic lineup on PS3. Yeah, but I I brought up that I'm hoping that they finally bring the PlayStation classics to PlayStation 4. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah that is true, but. But I don't know what games would be the good start for well, the, the only PS one I know that's for PS3, is, but it, it's cross-plat. And guess what? I'm gonna get it for PS4, and that's what? Persona Five. Oh yes. Mm. Mm hmm. So it's like that. That would have been the last big hurrah for PS3, because that's the main reason I still kept my PS3. I'm like, I'm gonna get Persona. Well, crap! It's coming for PS4. Yes. <laughs> Unlike the last time, who thought? You know, I I was gonna say. For classic games that to come on the PS4, you know, from the either PS1, PS2, I was gonna say, hey, hey look, you, you know, a good game that would actually start on a start off on PS4 as a classic, in terms of their classic lineup, uh, Final Fantasy VII. Oh wait, that's already coming out on PS4 as a PS4 port, but the PC version. Please be excited! <laughs> Welcome to the PlayStation Experience. Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy. <laughs> Seven. The port of the PC version. That is what you want. I just love everyone's expressions during that moment when, when they saw Seven and then and then saw that it just stayed the PS1 graphics. <laughs> just the collective like down, the collective just disappointment. If you want collective disappointment, you know, yeah, you, know you know, everyone in the eyes was quoting. You, you know, they were, they would, you know, they were quoting that famous line for the Raven: "The horror, the horror." You want somebody's good reaction? Go watch Maximilian Dew's reaction of it. 
Yeah, his reaction was pretty much everyone's. Yep. The PC. The, the smile that that just slowly dissolved away. And it's the PC version of the game that's really. Oh my God. Oh no! You know what's even more offended? I was even more offended. Not only that, but it's nearing twenty freaking dollars. What? The, the game Final Fantasy VII is. It's like for well, PS4. It's sixteen bucks. Yeah, almost twenty dollars. Well, then again, have you seen the iPad ports of of their Final Fantasies? Same price. I, yes, I, I have, but why. still, what the hell? It's, no, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying like they they apparently think they can get away with it. So no, nope. Square, I have more faith in you than Konami. Don't turn Code around and be more like Konami. Yeah, that, that, the Cydia game, that's a thing. Yes. So far, you point that out. Yes. That's something. Would we? That isn't that running on on basically PS4 guts. Yes, it is. The arcade yep. the arcade game is running on PlayStation 4 architecture. So, what if we saw a glimpse of that? Mm. That'll make me happy a little bit. At least. Well, they, mm. well, the game is coming out. I think it's either at the end of this year or early next year. But at least they want to keep it an arcade release for one year before the PS4 version comes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, what if what if they just said, well, after that year. What's coming for PS4? How about how about like the first trailer for uh, the new Star Ocean game? Oh yeah, because that's coming out on PS3 and PS4, if memory serves me correctly. You know, well, I think I think it would really be smart of Sony to do that, to be honest, because mm -hmm. I feel like that it's not only with Sony but it's also with Microsoft too. I feel like they need to both showcase not only games that are coming out this year. But early glimpses of games that are unannounced that are coming out for next year as well. Mm-hmm. Because, again, they, they really, especially those two, they really need to sell on their consumer base on why they should be picking up either console later in the year. Yes. Wholeheartedly agree. But uh, getting back to Sony... Uh... Do you think we'll possibly might see the first glimpse or the first trailer for God of War 4? I I think a teaser is more likely than well, an actual, you know. Yeah, well, at, at least please. something uh, in relation to God of War 4, like a teaser, so yeah. I think it'll be more akin to what we saw as the first CG, like, in-game trailer for Uncharted 4 or Thief's End at uh, E3 last year. Uh-huh. I think it'd be more akin to like that, like giving us a little vague idea of what the story is and the setting. I just hope to God it's after God of War 3, not another prequel, like we need another one of those. Oh my God, speaking of, what if they made Devil May Cry and yet again it's before 2? But people still be happy because there's a new new Dante. Because it's an actual Dante and not yeah. Dino, right guys? <laughs> yeah. Not Antonio Nades. So... There's this game that is coming out for Vita that, that I mentioned. I wonder what else to do for Vita. Probably nothing else. But I wanted to bring up the name of it. And, I, and as I do that, Chrome is going, I don't want to load. Just like with you, Jeff. Just like with you. Chrome does it to me. Chrome Dome. Gee, thanks, Google. Uh, as soon as you said that, Google loaded. It's just like, what? what? I'm awake. <laughs> Here we go. You better this game be. for for Vita. It plays like Valkyria Chronicles, mm. but it's made by. It's, I'm trying. I'm, I'm looking it up now. And oh, here he goes. Here we go. It's called Lost Dimension. Lost Dimension. It plays like Valkyria Chronicles. It's for the Vita. It was out in Japan already. Well, it's coming over here with twenty dollars of DLC free. Hmm. Hmm. Now that's interesting. And it comes out July 28th, released by Atlas. Hmm. Hmm. And then a European release is later in the summer. And it plays like Valkyria Chronicles. It's it's a strategy RPG, but actually. Uh, speaking of Vita, oh, speaking of Vita, though, do you think we'll get the first glimpse of the third revision to the PlayStation Vita? We might if they still. If that's that's what I'm asking. Do you think they completely don't care, or do they still kind of care? Uh, if they do, well, this is Sony we're talking about. If they do still kind of care, then yes, I expect a glimpse of the new revision. 
Do they care? I don't think it, I don't think so. Are they crazy enough? You bet your butt. Oh if yeah. If they don't care, then we'll see nothing. All we'll see is they'll talk about it yet again. You can stream your PS4 to your Vita. That's all. That's all it does. There's no. <laughs> Yep. That's all it does. It, it just it's oh. nothing PS4. more than replacement. It's nothing more than the Wii U gamepad. Yeah. Nothing for nothing uh. more than PlayStation 4. Uh. That's all it is. That's Why? All it is. Why? Why? No, that's, Why? Oh, that's what that actually. If there is a, another revision of the Vita, that's what your revision revised Vita is gonna be. Just nothing more than the Wii U gamepad. We decided to rename yeah. the PS Vita into the PS4 gamepad. Then basically they're pulling they're pulling off what Microsoft did with the Kinect right be, right after an I mean right before Nintendo announced it's a brand theirs. new thing we call it the PS4 gamepad isn't that just a Vita shut up that never existed <laughs> and then yeah. and then oh. next and then next year Nintendo shows off the NX with its new uh, innovative uh, you know thing that they have going on and people are just gonna go ape nuts for it and then Sony's gonna be shitting bricks and like, I hope to God it's not for short Aldi. Like, uh, uh, like that one web, uh, like that one web comic with uh, Miyamoto showcasing the the Wii oh, yeah, at E3 2006, and there's a Microsoft executive just you know thinking of some innovation, and then E3 2009 or 2010 comes along with showing Kinect games, and then then the next panel Miyamoto at E3 2011 have the gamepad with the troll face on, and says yeah, troll face, I remember that. yes, and then the guy remember... the guy from Microsoft is looking at him just oh. speechless. I think that was pretty I know. I can't, um, I can't remember. Well, I'm pretty sure it was, but we'll get, again, the comments will you. Yeah. But, all... but still, here's the picture of the Miyamoto troll face, and it's just. Oh, you still got. That's, that, that there's nightmare fuel, but that's funny nightmare fuel. Put that at the end of the video. Oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I will. I, I, I will, and I will add the Wilhelm scream to that, too. Count on it. Ah! <laughs> ah! yeah. Yes. What's yes. funny now is, is that is that I'm supposed to be the Sony fan. I wonder if people listening. He doesn't sound like one at all. Yes. Like trust me, I literally only have Sony consoles right now. I used to have a Wii U. Mm -hmm. I'm planning to get one again and a 3DS because mm -hmm. Project Cross Zone too. Yes. Brave new. <laughs> but um. There was something that got into my mind. I was going to bring it up. Frack. Oh, Bethesda. That's a third-party discussion. Yeah. What, what yep. do you think if, say, a Bethesda employee just ran out there and said, Wait a minute, guys. I got I to gotta show. What? You sound like you ran out of breath. You only ran 20 feet. I'm really... I'm a developer. Of course, I, I'm not in shape. I, I, work, I sit on my ass on the desk all day working on games. That's all I, I do. I, I just eat donuts. <laughs> God, Tony, hit the button. Show it. <gasps> Hoo <-yah. gasps> Dova King, Dova King, PS4 version of Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> Running at 60 I, frames a I second. Because it's all they need to do is upres it. Yes. And hopefully 60 yeah. frames. And there's people who actually modded Skyrim to make it look very beautiful for today's standards. Oh my god, I, I'm seeing, I I have seen some mods that, yeah, they look, like, crazy it, good. Yeah, they look like something that you would actually see on a PC right now. Yeah, exactly. Th these modders are crazy talented to, to, like, take that old game and just add textures that make it look like a modern game. Like, whoa. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I, I'm watching one Let's Play that has that right now of Skyrim, and I'm just like, dude. And hey, dude was even talking while he's playing. He's like, I think my computer might crash because I'm... Because of all these mods and that I'm recording, but <laughs> I no. actually don't know which. It's since we're talking about Bethesda, I don't know which engine is worse from them: the Gamebryo engine that was used in Oblivion and Fallout 3, or the Creation engine for Skyrim. <laughs> Gamebryo, Skyrim actually works. <laughs> you know, I actually thought of a joke in relation to your little uh, impromptu or. Uh, Improvised scenario of that guy running twenty feet onto the stage who's out of breath. I gotta hear it. Uh, and what you say his name was Tony? Oh, he told he, he was yelling to a guy named Tony to turn to show the on the screen. Okay, Tony yells out, "Yeah, right away!" But why are you breathing so hard? Did you get an arrow to the knee? <laughs> and then I that guy gets, gets thrown at him. Uh, I remember. 
I, I keep talking about this to, to you guys, but since we're, this is going to be on the video, Jeff, yep. did I not say day freaking one? <laughs> that would be a meme? Yeah. Did I launch, yes, launch yes, day? you did. Yes, you did. Uh, a lot, right alongside Oblivion's uh, I fought mud crabs tougher than you. Mud crabs? They are giant enemy crabs! And the other one, let me guess, someone stole your sweets roll. <laughs> How long have we been at it, Double R, before, before I continue? Uh, we've been at it for 35 minutes and 30 <laughs> seconds. Oh, I think what else we can talk. If, if not, um... Uh, so what, many, what, cause, mean, cause, cause what I, I, name based dialogue is Sony gonna infuse in this year's speech? What? 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 Well, what Joss Whedon, not Joss Whedon, Brian Michael Bendis show will they debut this time? Oh God, Brian Michael Bendis! <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie. You know what that reminded me of was when uh, James Cameron came out during Ubisoft's 2009 oh God! Press for oh Avatar. God, <laughs> it was <laughs> that, that bad. I that was so confused that there. That, <laughs> that 48 minute snooze fest of showing Avatar the game. Oh my God. Oh. oh, I was so boring. I was so confused. I was like, I was just like asleep and confused. It is so pretty, you just like the did. movie. It is so pretty, just like the movie. It is so pretty, just like the movie. Yeah, we'll go watch the movie. God. Mhm. Mm ah, oh, jeez. Would you shut up? Go back to go back to being egotistical in Hollywood. Crap. What, what was I? Gonna, what was I talking about before that? <laughs> Sorry about. My... No, no, it's okay. <laughs> how long? How, what, what, what were we talking about? Uh, I, I bet you'd ask how long we went. I said 35 minutes. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I asked. Yeah. Oh, and that's that when I, I asked. I, I remember. Yeah. I, I remember now. I didn't, get, I didn't get to say. I mentioned how last week I mentioned with I, Microsoft, and, and this week I mentioned with Sony that I'm a little optimistic, at least with both, because not knowing as much as we don't. Basically, not have not having all this leaked and and being able to just say this they're gonna show this they're gonna show this they're gonna show this, it actually kind of makes me excited again for all three that we don't yeah. know that mm -hmm. that we we're as in the dark as we are because mm -hmm. knowing it all beforehand just I don't know like uh, kind of sucks the joy out of it doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah, but I hate to be the bearer of bad news on an update okay. for Microsoft. <sighs> Two idiots that were using Xbox One's leaked Oh yeah, yeah, they, 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 they the Microsoft Wars remastered. Microsoft bricked their consoles temporarily. Temporarily. Yeah. <laughs> and I just and I just like to bring it up that people are, are getting pissy at Microsoft. Uh, here's the thing. Have to though. I mean, they what? broke the D. And they they broke the non-disclosure agreement. Right. right. That's that's a law. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a legal thing. They and here's the thing. I want to bring this up too. You cannot tell me that Sony and Nintendo both respectively have the would have the same exact power to do that on their own respective consoles. Yes, the they same would. Happen. Yes, they yeah. would. You could get fined for bringing breaking a non-disclosure agreement or or breaking an embargo like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's just the that's just the law of journalism, right there, folks. You can't do that. Yep. But I hate I hate to be a bearer of bad news in regards to that because like we like you just brought up, it's nice to be not spoiled, but because of some idiots that wanted to, we were spoiled. Granted, it was it looked like it was a multiplayer match, but at the same time, I would want to see that at the event itself rather than through you know the Xbox DVR site. You know what I mean? Yeah. But continue. But again, I just want to like, boy, downer. I said, again, yeah. bringing it up again, it's cool. You that know, we don't know as much as we don't know. You know, for yeah. places. Because this makes the stream much more fun. Because then we get those uh, squee moments. And yes, I'm not yeah. letting him live it down. Squee! <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> he knows me. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for PS4, how about we talk about some of the games that are exclusive to the system console-wise that could make an appearance during Sony's press event, like Street Fighter V or even... How, do, how the frack did I forget that? Mm. Go ahead. 
because we knew because we know that Street Fighter V is console exclusive to the PlayStation 4. So there there's no way that that game would not at least make an appearance somewhat at Sony's press event like a, a new trailer with some new newer characters brought into the mix because the only characters that we do know that are playable right now are Ryu, Chun-Li, uh Charlie and M. Bison. Mm -hmm. That's it. I hope we see Alex. Yep. Or any more well, characters. So, okay, so which, basically, let's like, which, like you just said, let's do that. Let's talk about the uh, the games we do know. Okay. Now that we got the speculation out of the way. Mm hmm. So but, we got Street Fighter V, Uncharted mm -hmm. 4. Uh, do you think uh, possibility. Didn't they say that they were going to bring the Uncharted trilogy to PS4 as PS4 remaster? Yep. They're, they love doing that. So. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> They did it with Last of Us three times or something like that. Oh, yes. <laughs> like and they, and, they, and they're least, not the only one, right, guys? I at mean, least, uh, at least with Uncharted, it's not over and over and over again. This is this would yeah. be the first time it'd be remastered. Mm -hmm. Remastered with uh, uh, with better graphics and in 60 frames a second. Yes. And in 1080p, oh, mind man. you. Then the PS4 yeah. would never... My dad would be playing it all day. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Um, so, so with um, Street Fighter V being a possibility that would show at Sony's press event, how about uh, Dreamfall Chapter, since that's now a PlayStation 4 exclusive, that indie game that was in development? Oh, yeah. That, that makes me think. Dreamfall Chapters, which one's that one? I know it's, it's an indie game, but... It was a game that... It's, it was supposed to be an episodic... Uh, type of game. Oh, it's like a, it's like an adventure game, right? From what I'm seeing, it's uh, something like that. But uh, it was originally in development for PC, Wii U, Xbox One, and PlayStation Four. But Sony uh, purchased or uh, paid money to make it a PlayStation Four. <laughs> so I'm gonna make this game for all these systems. So he just goes, "How about how about I give you a ton of money and you just make it for us? Mm -hmm. How much yep. money? A ton. A ton. Okay. So." Yeah, we do know that that game is exclusive PlayStation 4 as well. When it, it was originally supposed to be an indie game, and you know that kind of pisses me off a little bit that a big company like that would just take would just pay money to an up and coming indie developer that I'm sure would have wanted to try to be solo at first before talking about deals afterwards. Yeah, you never know with them. Actually, you never know. Maybe they they just want money. You well, never, well, I know that. You never know. Well, I know that, but I actually find that to be kind of unfair when you think about it. Because, I mean, when you, you take got it, do. But when you, when, I mean, when, would do it. Well, well, they actually. Uh, well, I know that, but, but let's take a look at something. Someone like Pencil Test Studios, the guys who are making Armacrog, the spiritual successor to Neverhood. They had the Wii U version of that game as one of the stretch goals for their Kickstarter, and they obviously passed the stretch goal to make a Wii U version of it, as, aside from it coming to just the PC. Ah, but, but then Sony came in, put some money towards it to actually make ah. a PlayStation 4 version of it as well when it was not originally ah. part of the stretch goals. That's the thing that, that really kind of, you. you know... Oh, I feel you, I feel you. I that, agree. That baffles me. It's just, I see where you're coming from now. Yeah. I mean, it just, it's like, let these people have their time to shine. I mean, let it be exclusive for a little bit and then wait, an, like, at least for a year in order to consider a port. Like with Shovel Knight, for instance. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, or like if, like, Safer Game was already inclined with stretch goals for Xbox One, PS4, and Wii U, respectively. Like, for example, the recent one called Bloodstain, which is the spiritual successor to the, you know, Metroidvania style Castlevania games. Those are coming out for uh, not, not, not Wii U, but it is sometimes released for PS4 and Xbox One. Although there is, although there could be a possibility if they actually made a stretch goal. Based a possibility. But, but also looking like Ukulele, for example, too, that's coming out simultaneous release for all three platforms, including PC. That, that's what you're basically saying. You want to see these Kickstarter you know yeah indie developers actually have yeah. some time to shine before they talk about making deals with other uh companies and even bigger publishers like sony nintendo and microsoft for instance let them have their time to shine a little bit because they're just an up-and-coming developer 
and you know that's kind of my beef that I had with uh, you know with Dreamfall chapters when Sony uh, well when they uh, put money down to make it act make that game an exclusive for the system as well as putting their money giving their money to Pencil Test Studios to make a PS4 version of uh, Armacroc when it wasn't was when it wasn't originally considered as part of their stretch goals to begin with. Yeah, so I, you know, I just really hope that's something that, that, uh, you know, big time publishers need to put into consideration before they actually just jump the ball like that. Because I actually want to see these indie developers grow instead of just being, instead of just being money had, just hadded money from someone bigger. Because that's just jumping the gun right there from their actual growth potential. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I didn't mean to go off on a tangent, but, uh, you know. All right. But, but yeah, we do, like I said, Dreamfall chapters. I'm definitely sh certain that we're going to be at least seeing a demo during their indie case show, uh, lineup or whatever, which I'm wondering if they're actually going to be doing that this year. Because they didn't do one mm -hmm. last year. They, they didn't do one last year, which really surprised me because they did one in 2013. They showed off uh, about eight indie games that were coming out for the PS4. But they didn't do yeah. one, they didn't do one last year. Well, they probably won't too because here's the thing. I think they only did it at E3 2013 to hype up, you know, potential buyers. Well, you know, because the, that console was coming out at the time for November. They wanted, you know, they wanted on that purchases right there at their, you know, at their, their event right then and there. Well, true. I mean it's a possibility, but you know, I feel like it was just a ploy there. I'm not saying that, you know, any Every company wouldn't do that because they would if they want you know mm. potential buyers right uh but there's one game i do feel like that we're definitely gonna see more of and it's if i recall correctly it's coming out around the same time of e3 is um until dawn until dawn that, I, I know the, that uh, that's a horror game oh yes oh, Heavy oh, horror. Right. yeah or horror rain horror it's not made by the same people but it's it's Heavy Thank rain. God. Very, very heavy rainish. Oh yeah. But there, there, you went to indies. There was something I want to bring up. Uh, I brought it up before we recorded. That was a uh, No Man's Sky. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you mentioned Sony doing this, and now I gotta. And then, uh, and I was just, that's what I was gonna ask is, do you think Sony would do that with the No Man's Sky developer? Because they're all. Because they even said straight up from a PR uh, person saying, "We here at Sony are treating it like it's coming from us." Well, it, wasn't it originally PlayStation 4 exclusive, or was it multi -pad? I think it was PC as well. Oh, PC? Oh, okay. But if it was something like console exclusive, and it's, I would, I'd be like, wouldn't that be kind of pointless since, it's, since it would be console exclusive anyways? I think it is console exclusive, but isn't it? Or, or is it coming to Xbox? No, I can't remember. Either way, either but, way, I'm wondering, like, do you think that they'll go to the No Man's Sky developer and go, uh... How about your next game and every game after that just be for us? Mm -hmm. I can see that, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I, I think I think Sony wouldn't do that for No Man's Sky, but I think no. most No Man's Sky content, game, they the games would, after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They would make them a PlayStation exclusive. Yeah. Hello, and, and what would Hello Games bring as a first-party developer if they were first-party after No Man's Sky? Hmm. Anyway, we're talking about E3. Anyway. You you mentioned um, some games that you mentioned Street Fighter Five. Yes. I wonder if Sony, if Sony cares about the FGC, like they say they do, and if they if I'm hoping they show some, it would be nice not just to see games, but to see I don't know an arcade stick or two. You know, say mm -hmm. hey, we got an arcade stick for y'all, like Xbox, like Microsoft did with Killer Instinct. We got an arcade stick made. Can can I can we get there are arcade sticks out, but I just want to see one that Sony says, look it, we're, we're, we care so much, we'll actually have one made by uh, us or by uh, Mad Cats that uh -huh. we commissioned. Just to, you know, it just wouldn't just hurt. To, I mean, I, I'm, all I'm asking for is a gesture, you know, especially since mm -hmm. Street Fighter is supposed to, supposed to be the big daddy of fighting games, and it's only for them. Would you ride that high? I don't know. Yeah. Not only that, but not only that, Jerry, but it's funny you bring that up, too, because you imagine they would due to the fact that a certain re-release is also coming out exclusively for PS4, and that's Ultra Street Fighter 4. Oh, 
yes, that is true. What was that? You know, the re there's going to be a re uh, exclusive re-release of Street Fighter 4. Yeah, yeah, it's coming out later this four. month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 26. I imagine they would, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. That, I hope that, they would. That's what I'm saying. That, I'm pretty sure that, that that's, a, that's a prediction I'll make right now. We, we already made predictions. One set prediction I'd make besides... Well, what, what the frack did I say in the beginning of the, sh the show? Oh, I, I mentioned Gran Turismo 7. Uh-huh. That's another one, I think. Street Fighter, besides Street Fighter 5, that there'd be a Street Fighter 5 uh, arcade stick along with it. The, I, well, then again, it's also coming out for Xbox One, but I was going to say, like, a final trailer to Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition. There might be, even though it is also coming out. Because, I mean... They've done that with multi-plat games before. Well, yeah, that is true. They, especially since but DMC the... has been on Xbox 360 as well, mm -hmm. but I, I, I don't know if the sales were more for PS3 at that time. You know, I uh, this probably wouldn't surprise me, but uh, we do know for a fact that the Tales series from Namco Bandai, they are actually, they've actually been PlayStation exclusive for quite a wa long while now. Um, and as of recent, with Tales of Zestiria recently coming out in Japan, while there's still uh, a third quarter release for this year in the Western market, there have been reports coming in. Uh, these are rumored reports saying that Tales of Zestiria has actually been showing up as uh, a PlayStation 4 type of retail release. Do you think there is a possibility that we might actually see that game end up ending up getting the PS4 treatment? at Sony's press event. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, because, you know, it's like, it's okay. I mean, yeah, PS3, it's a, it's a good console, but how much longer can you just be stuck on that? It's time to move on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, which is... Which is one of the reasons why I kind of find it baffling why they're, why uh, Tri-Ace is actually making a PS3 version of the new Star Ocean game. when, you know, it's coming out on next-gen consoles, or current-gen consoles right now. So, yeah, there may be some merit to, you know, that with Tales of Zestiria that's coming out later this year, but again, that's just speculation right there. And I guess I went on the speculation route again and staying what, instead of saying what we actually know, but... Uh... Hmm... It's like with Microsoft, where you really don't know about what exactly. Sony has yeah, exactly. Yeah, which which is which which is what I mentioned. Yeah, exactly. We really don't know, and I said that makes me kind of happy for you, you know for both of them. One more thing I wanted to bring up since they didn't actually show it last year. And speaking of Man Namco Bandai, do you think there's possibility that Ridge Racer Eight will actually make an appearance? Believe it or not, mm -hmm. I I like I said with Drive Club. Those are the sim racers. Uh huh. They mm -hmm. got it. They got to rip the arcade racer too. Yes, exactly. Yep. And Ridge Racer is more arcadey. And I love Ridge Racer. And you know, I played I... the crap out of Seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, uh, when it comes to the sim racers like uh, Gran Turismo and uh, Forza, I have any of you tried Project Cars yet? Not yet. Oh man, so brilliant. I like it. I, I I mean, I like how they present the career mode, so it's like, you know, when taking a look at a game like that, you probably won't want to touch another Gran Turismo or Forza ever again just because of what it actually does. The, the, the innovations that the game brings to itself that the others haven't even tried. Hmm. Like, uh... Like with the career mode, you can start off in a specific tier, which the lowest tier is eight, which involves you riding go karts. Mm -hmm. And then as as you progress through the different tiers, you actually get much better cars. So, you know, if they, it, in terms of the simulation games, it's like what can, you know, what can Gran Turismo actually do to innovate? Because the last Gran Turismo game that I actually really enjoyed quite immensely was its first outing on the PS2, and that was Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, I remember that. I played that one a lot, too. I played the all 1, 2, and 3 a lot. Mm-hmm. And mm. then um, 
I didn't play four or five. And they also had that spin-off tourist trophy that involved motorcycles. Yep. Which it which was okay, was but what, 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 yeah, it was good, but it just felt more like Gran Turismo. It felt like Gran Turismo Four, but with motorcycles in it instead. And it was made uh -huh. by and it was made but, by uh, Polyphony Polyphony Digital as well. So I'm gonna make one last prediction, then I'm gonna wrap up by ask by by asking you guys what's two. My one last prediction that's out there, because you just mentioned Polyphony Studios, and that made me think of uh. Oh, they start with it. Psygnosis. Yeah, they're not Psygnosis anymore. I think they're, they're dead now, right? Uh. <laughs> he knows where I'm going. Uh. An out there prediction made by I don't know who, but they I know they still have the rights to, to the series. Mm -hmm. A randomly crazy, just out there HD version rebooted. Uh, or, or sequel of Colony Wars. <laughs> <laughs> He's sad because he knows it's not happening. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And then two, and two that I'll stick with that are. Why you have to curse my dreams? Because I have to. I don't know. He's just <laughs> Harry. That's who he is. Two, two that I'm sticking with. That that I'm sticking with. That are, it is a uh, Street Fighter Five peripheral, and. Grand Turismo 7 that, that we don't know that, I, that I'm just like I have a feeling it'll happen though but you know I'll be proven wrong and maybe you know usually usually we are aren't we? Oh, yes <laughs> we I, usually are I, I got one way out there and two realistic the first way out there one you know what I'm going to say right Jerry I think so <laughs> Mega Man Legends 3 for PS4. Oh! I knew it started with an M. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but realistic, but proven wrong, but let's be frank, this is Capcom. Exclusive paid DLC on disc for Street Fighter V. Oh, uh, right? no, not That's again. That's something we don't want, but... <laughs> it's funny, you're right, it's so likely, though. Uh. Oh, the reason why we put content on disk it's form of paid dlc is because we need to patch it with, uh, with software updates to make them available yeah freaking right mm -hmm. that's bs we smell from miles and miles away and they smell pretty bad too yeah and um another one that i think is gonna be proven true but i won't be surprised i was pro i'll be proven wrong that recent room that's been going around guards to call of duty black ops 3 dlc being exclusive to PS as for or first, I think that's true. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense because of how much more units of PlayStation 4s are out there worldwide compared to Xbox One. Do you know what I mean? Mm hmm. So, how about you, Kyle? Uh, probably, uh, probably far fetched. Both of them are, but, uh, I would say. Uh, for PS4, re uh, revival with a new uh, installment or reboot of both Dino Crisis and Onimusha. This is Capcom would, we're talking about. But... You would think that there will be a Dino Crisis being made right now because of, well, you know, who knows? Maybe the Earth, maybe there is. But I agree with Onimusha as much. Dino Crisis is more realistic, but Onimusha, yeah, that's more. Fantasy based. Dang it, Capcom. Capsapom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if I wanted to say exclusive content wise for PS4, I'm pretty sure Sony has some, some deal with EA w when it comes to Star Wars Battlefront. Oh, yeah. That'd be nice. Mm hmm. For them. Like, like exclusive uh, color palette swaps of ad ats. In Battlefront, and since this is E, we're talking about obviously there's gonna be there's gonna be three or four dollars a piece. Yep, for every color. Or hell, for all we know, or hell, for all we know, this could be the this generation's equivalent to the uh, horse armor that Bethesda did with Oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the best armor? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I saw. What else? What does he got? Double R? Um. Ugh. 
Resident Evil 7 or Devil May Cry 5? Mm. Those those actually are very possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um... Or... Oh, oh, wait. Or another crazy one, and it's relevant too because we all hate this publication now because of what they did today, but... Now, this is crazy, but it is totally... It totally could happen. Sony buying the rights to Silent Hill. Hmm. That's what I'm saying. What if they're so mad at Konami that they'll say, we wanted this game to come out, frack it, we'll take it. Yeah. It is possible. Because I'm pretty sure that Sony might be pretty pissed off at what they did. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I said earlier. Mm -hmm. I, said, I said they got it. And be I think mad. they're really. Oh, they have to. I mean, you saw that thing I sent you two days ago about them potentially breaking their own network exactly. through. Exactly. Just because it was yeah. pull it, that it might have bro broken people's digital downloads. Yeah, exactly. So Sony's got to be really mad that you screwed up our infrastructure. Okay, it's part Actually, of our fault too. But <laughs> it's actually, a... actually, I got one more. Okay. okay. Since it's almost been since it's been about three years since the last installment released. Well, you know, three years ever yeah, ever since you know three years ago was 2012 with the last game that released, uh, and they said that there's a possibility you know that they are w currently working on the next entry. What do you think about? there being a possibility that Ninja Gaiden 4 may actually be on the PlayStation 4 as an exclusive. I... Considering Team Ninja now, they, they might actually do that. It's 50-50. Like, I wouldn't be surprised, but I see it being more of a multi-plat still, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get it. I would not be surprised. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Or, you do have a, a time because... exclusive. That's what we both said earlier. That's what I'm saying, because I just realized... Remember how it was last generation where the Sigma subseries was exclusive to Sony? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's this time around different from Microsoft and the Xbox One. Yeah, maybe it'd be timed that then the Microsoft gets Sigma or whatever. Uh, let's just hope this time around. If that's the case, for your PS4 users, I hope you don't get the same equivalent that was Ninja Gaiden 3 vanilla version. Yeah, I hope oh, yeah. not. But um, now that we said all that, We've we've been going for a good good, good length. Yeah. What have we got to wrap up? Um. We already mentioned stuff. I think it's unanimous that we're just like with last week's episode with Microsoft, where you know we know so little that it's actually refreshing. And, and yes. That it's yes. Going in knowing not knowing how much, but also I think there's some anxiety with regards to Sony because. This is Sony. Mm -hmm. They obviously do. They could do something that we say that would make us say, "Oh no, not that." Mm -hmm. That's. Yeah. I don't want that to happen because for them at the moment, but they can't do that. But again, this is Sony. Mm -hmm. They would be crazy enough to do something like that, you know what I mean? But I hope it's not, and they would realize that they're not at the financial stable stability as of recent to do it. You know what I mean? But that's it. I feel like all of us, you know, universally would say that, you know, it's really refreshing that another one that's going to be showing their stuff again at E3 this year is keeping silent, keeping their cards close to their chest. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think they would want to do that since, you know, with how bad they are financially right now, I'm pretty sure they want to keep uh, close, you know, the whole thing behind closed doors and then fully surprise us at E3 if they don't want to make that same mistake. And I'd past. like to add to, uh -huh. I like that two out of three so far have actually scheduled their reveals throughout the remainder of this year from both Microsoft and Sony. I like that both have done that. Mm -hmm. I like that both have planned their announcements and exclusive announcements timely. Mm-hmm. I can't say, I'm not bashing Nintendo, but I'm saying we don't know as of yet. Right. Because it does Nintendo, you know what I mean? But Of course. Two out of three, I think that's damn good. But overall, I'm, I'm, I'm weary about what they're announced, but at the same time, I'm in really intrigued because of what's, uh, it, it, honestly, because of what's been going on as of recent with how, how you know, the Sony PlayStation has been still dominating in regards to hardware sales. Mm -hmm. Not only here in the U.S., but also worldwide, but more importantly, 
what he just announced is saying that yeah we're not going to gamescom this year however we're going to be at a we're going to have we're going to, we're going to be having a presser at a paris related gaming convention in, in october mm -hmm. it makes me wonder what they're going to announce at this year's e3 and if they're going to save their I wonder if they're even going to be bringing bombshells at this year's E3 or if they're saving those big announcements for their own, which is PlayStation Experience. Are you still going with me there or what? <laughs> I hope. If I have okay. enough money, I hope. No, that's, that, that's, that's what I was asking. Not, not if you have, but just like if you still want to go. I me. do. Dude, I, even though I have a PlayStation 4, yeah, I would. Okay. Good. Good. I... Dude, I'm a fucking gamer. What the hell do you think? Alright. So. Let's let, let's plug. Okay. I, I already said what I gotta say, which is you know like I got I got the two like I said the two I'm hoping for that I think are li likely is a arcade stick and uh, that racing game, Gran Turismo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or Ridge Racer. I but all right, um, Jeff, why don't you go ahead and plug first this time? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at 16 bit Jeff. You can also follow me on Tumblr as well, too, which I rarely use because it being Tumblr. But you can follow I me on. I think we're on Reddit nowadays more. Yeah, it's mostly Reddit, but mm -hmm. Tumblr, I still have. I still occasionally go on Tumblr once they're great work well. 16 uh, bit Jeff, that .com. Like I said, I, you can find me on Reddit as well, too. Um, I do. Again, I do sporadic. Uh, Articles for the Broken Infinite over at thebrokeninfinite.com, all one word. And uh, that's it on my end. Oh, and um, like us, all, all of our content as a group with this podcast and other things like Let's Plays, you can check out over at youtube.com slash the game refers. Mm hmm. All right. Me? Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, you can find me on YouTube at Double RPG Reviews, uh, which is www.youtube.com slash RRPG Reviews, which the RRPG are, are all in capitals, just in case you don't know. And uh, I do uh, reviews. Uh, I did Let's Plays before, but I'm thinking about doing something with uh, Double RPG Gamer for Solo, which I think I mentioned that in last week's episode or in one of the previous episodes about what I actually want to do with that channel going forward. Um... And I also do two cents videos on occasion, in case if I need to express something. But I am still trying to get back on track with reviews, but it's been hard because of work. It's just working a lot, and since summer's going to be coming, my time with doing reviews is probably going to be extremely limited. But I hope that's not the case. But I'll just have to, you know, play it by both eyes, ears, and uh, hopefully I will get in some work to be done. But I will definitely be sure to make it for E3 this year, you know, and especially to see all the big three with their press events and uh, as well as the third party ones that are doing their pressers. But uh, yeah, you can definitely find me on uh, YouTube.com at Double RPG Reviews, and you can also find me on Facebook, where it, which my Facebook fan page is Double RPG Reviews as well, and even on Twitter.com, where my hat, my n username is at Double RPG Reviews if you want to follow me there. So, yep, you can definitely find me on all those three places, but uh, who knows, maybe I'll start a Reddit or something, or kind of, you know, do what both Jeff and Jerry are doing with Reddit, and maybe start an account there or something. Who knows, but... but maybe you'll the, get a random gold... Maybe. Mm -hmm. I did. Who knows? that funny story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, as of right now, you can actually find me at those three locations. So be on the lookout for more content coming from me in the future that you won't find anywhere else on my YouTube page. And even awesome. on and even on the Game Riffer Zone YouTube page where we do our Rift Table Arcades as well as the Game Riffers episodes, which we hope to get back on track with Thousand Arms since Jerry has recorded more footage for us. Yep. And uh, my turn? Yep. Yep. You're okay, Jeff Hart mentioned the Broken Infinite, which I am the vice president of, and we've been doing a lot more stuff on there lately. We we're actually, matter of fact, I am recruiting. If you think you can write for us and you want to be a part of of uh, the Geek Press, I guess that's what we'll call it. We'll I'll call it because we're mainly comic press, but we do also get a uh, noticed by gaming and, and stuff like that because yep. we actually do get press passes for cons and you gotta be part of the press to get that, right? That's mm -hmm. the check. Yep. Yeah, you gotta get your feet wet, guys, <laughs> if you wanna get in the industry somehow. Plus, um, you 
plus we uh, we also get a. Uh, advanced review copies of comics which is the main reason we're recruiting we get so many review copies of comics from different publishers that it's just me and the president that's reviewing them just two guys and we need people to review these comics yep so if you want to review these comics and get and get known in the press and be able to go to cons you know even though even though we review comics like I said we are able to get press passes into other cons like anime Boston and stuff Pretty simple. So, contact me. Mm-hmm. My Twitter is at Ikari Radio, at I K A R I R A D I O. We also got like my email. It's also because, you know, Ikari Warriors. True Ikari Warriors dot, uh, at gmail.com, which is, you know, like Ikari Radio, the Ikari part, the true and warriors. Mm-hmm. Above, I mean, before and after Ikari. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also my my. I mentioned my Twitter already, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. So there's also um, my Deviant Art, which I put up stuff on there. Um, I'm working on a web comic, so you want to go to fighterhouse.deviantart.com for info on that. The web comic won't be posted there, but that's where you'll get the first news of it dropping. So. That's f i g h t e r x a o s. dot deviantart. dot com. I can mention my email if you if you want to hit me up for becoming a comic reviewer and Broken Infinite. Like I already mentioned, Twitter. I'm on Reddit, same same name as Deviantart Fighter Cows. And Tumblr is the same as my Twitter. That's Ikari Radio. I think that's it. All right. Oh. Because my webcomic, like I said, go to my DeviantArt for that. Because uh-huh. the, the link is some weird, so just go to my DeviantArt and you'll see the webcomic link from there. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, guys, we all hope you, that you enjoyed this episode, and we will definitely see you next week for our coverage of what we believe is going to take place during uh, Nintendo's presence at E3. And we will have a special guest that's going to be coming on to talk with us, and that is the one and only Zen Gamer, who is from the Gamers at Large podcast and even the Gamers at Large uh, YouTube page. So we will definitely give him a warm welcome to be our special guest. And uh, if you happen to, um, you know, if you watch those guys uh, at Gamers at Large or even on their Facebook page, be sure to let them know to come and listen to our podcast that will be up on YouTube, you know, sometime after we do our talk discussion. But yeah, definitely be on the lookout for when we have that episode aired on our YouTube channel where we have the quote unquote King of Logic with us to talk. Mm hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be a lot of fun. Definitely glad to meet one of the guys from the Gamers at Large, and who knows, maybe this will actually be the good start of a good friendship with them. But we'll have to see. But, mm-hmm. but anyway, we hope you enjoyed this episode, and like always, we will see you next week. And to quote a good friend of ours, we are the Game Riffers. God frickin' speed. Mm-hmm. Later. Leave me a Yee.